Hey, Retcon Raider here. I've been following a lot of indie projects on Kickstarter lately, so today I thought we'd take a quick look at another one that recently caught my eye. Today I thought we'd talk about Black Geyser by Grape Ocean Technologies. So, what is Black Geyser? Well, at a glance, it's an isometric, party-based CRPG featuring a real-time with pause combat system and a particularly heavy focus on both lore and reactivity. Black Geyser takes place in Isilmereld, the largest kingdom in the world of Yeringal. It's a lush, prosperous world teeming with life, and a world that has become the center of a long-running power struggle between the gods who helped create it. In this setting, the gods draw power directly from their worshippers, which encourages the gods to regularly interfere in mortal affairs. Some of these gods, such as the Supreme King Alnarius and Talindia the Green Mother, were benevolent, but others, such as the devil god Rothgor and Zornilsa the Goddess of Greed, had far darker plans for Yeringal. Over time, this direct divine interference gave rise to powerful demigods, who claimed control of various parts of Yeringal. The worst of these demigods were the monsters created by Rothgor, who sought to control the world through fear and terror. But even as the mortal races suffered, the more benevolent gods would not intervene. Although Supreme King Alnarius did not approve of the Darker God's machinations, he firmly believed that the mortal races needed to prove their worth by persevering against such threats. Eventually, the mortal races grew tired of this divine manipulation, shunning the influence of these oft-malevolent demigods. A group of powerful heroes defeated the worst of Rothgor's creations and founded the kingdom of Isilmerald, a melting pot where all mortal races were welcome, but the demigods were not. Alnarius was so impressed by this display of valor and harmony that he blessed this new kingdom, granting them good fortune for as long as they remained united. Isilmerald enjoyed centuries of peace and prosperity as a result, and, no longer feared or worshipped, the dark gods languished and their power waned. Reduced to a shadow of their former selves, the devil god Rothgor and Zornilsa the goddess of greed hatched a new plot to subvert the mortal races. Where fear had simply forced the mortal races to band together out of necessity, Zornilsa hoped that greed would instead tear them apart. Together, the two gods created the Black Geyser, an insidious creation that poisons mortal minds and fans the flames of obsessive greed. Now, a decade later, the kingdom is on the verge of civil war, and the player is thrust into a pivotal role as the hero or villain, who will either reunite the factions of Isilmerald or help bring about their downfall. From a story standpoint, this leads to what may very well be the most fascinating feature of the game. Due to the curse of greed inflicted by the Black Geyser, the player's actions have a direct and sometimes dramatic effect on the world around them. If the player promotes greed in some way, indulging their own selfish desires or encouraging it in others, then the curse will grow stronger and the kingdom will begin to decline. If the player instead fights these baser urges, behaving in a more selfless manner, then they can prevent this decline, or possibly even reverse it. As the game progresses, the strength of the curse will have a tangible effect on the world around the player. NPCs will become suspicious and hostile as the curse grows stronger, and may even turn to banditry to help satiate their lust for gold. Vineyards and mansions, both signs of a more prosperous time, will become the center of greed-fueled struggles that will often leave them in ruins. On a more personal level, the player will find that their own greed will often be reflected in the people around them. Merchants will charge higher prices, quest-givers will offer more meager rewards, and, at its most extreme, the curse may even cause the dead to reanimate as near-mindless ghosts, obsessively focused on whatever materialistic goals they pursued in life. This will ultimately allow for very different play styles, with an unusually heavy focus on player choice and consequence. The strength of the curse will have a direct impact on numerous aspects of the game, including the challenges the player will face, the items they will find, and the allies and enemies they will encounter. From a gameplay standpoint, Black Geyser is presented as a fairly conventional isometric CRPG, drawing heavy inspiration from classic games like Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale. Although it does use a unique new rule system, there are several obvious similarities to pre-existing games, such as the class-based character system and the slot-based spell memorization. 
However, the developers have included several interesting new mechanics that help set Black Geyser apart from other similar games. For example, the game will include several particularly interesting skills, such as brewing and drying, planting items, and throwing powders. A player proficient with throwing powders, for example, can hurl a handful of dirt at an opponent to temporarily blind them, or they can throw salt to increase the pain of an opponent's wounds. More ambitious players can instead harvest ingredients that they encounter during their travels, using the brewing and drying skill to create potions and powders with far more potent effects. Even more intriguing, this can be combined with the planting item skill, which can be used to plant things like slow-acting poisons on unsuspecting NPCs outside of combat. This can theoretically allow the player to covertly weaken or even neutralize dangerous opponents, allowing them to avoid messy fights or to quietly sneak into well-guarded locations. The player can also use this skill to plant other things in an NPC's inventory, such as stolen goods, which they can then use to frame the NPC for a crime. Of course, that's not to say the player will be required to make use of those sorts of skills. They'll be given a great degree of freedom on how they build their character, choosing from an assortment of five possible races and 13 possible classes. While this does include several conventional options, such as fighters, thieves, and clerics, it also includes some more unusual options, such as the resilient Highlander, the powerful Convoker, the vile Necromancer, and the smooth-talking, opportunistic Swindler. It's also important to remember that the player won't be able to avoid combat forever. Eventually, they'll be forced to defend themselves in battle. This is where Black Geyser's real-time with pause combat system comes in. As with many similar games, combatants all move simultaneously in real time, but the player can pause combat at any time to assign new orders to their party. This will be simple at first, as the player will only need to control their personal character, but over time they will encounter and potentially recruit additional party members. This will quickly lead to more complex tactical encounters, as the player juggles multiple characters at once, each with their own unique strengths and weaknesses. Although we don't know exactly how many companions are planned for the final game, we do know that the player can recruit up to five companions at a time. It also sounds like the player will have a relatively wide variety to choose from, with their choice of companions, as well as the nature of those companions, changing depending on the current strength of the curse. Under ideal circumstances, these companions will represent staunch allies, or possibly even romantic partners. But if the curse grows too strong, then they may end up turning on the player as righteous foes or greedy rivals. Ultimately, that's really what it boils down to. Black Geyser is a particularly intriguing fantasy RPG focused almost entirely on choice and consequence. While it resembles a fairly conventional retro CRPG, it sounds like the developers are keen on presenting the player with a level of reactivity that you just don't see in a lot of games. Now, the developers have spent years working on Black Geyser, and just recently ran a successful crowdfunding campaign to help finish the game's development. Not only did they meet their rather modest goal of just 50,000 euros, but they also flew through all of their planned stretch goals and social goals, adding significant new content to their original vision of the game. While the crowdfunding campaign did officially end back in May, the developers are still accepting late pledges through PayPal, you can back the project for as low as 19 euros, which gets you a digital copy of the game when it comes out in August of 2019. Higher tiers or optional add-ons will also grant numerous additional rewards, such as access to the game's early beta or future expansion packs. While there aren't any more monetary or social stretch goals to unlock, every new backer will still count towards one final special stretch goal, Emmanuel's Horde. This is essentially an in-game mega-dungeon, which represents the abandoned estate of Lord Emmanuel, a particularly greedy and vile noble who vanished under mysterious circumstances. Originally intended to just be a simple manor house, the developers have added new sub-locations based on the total number of backers. Five sub-locations have been unlocked so far, with another one planned if the project reaches at least 4,500 backers. Overall, I personally think that Black Geyser is a project with a lot of potential. 
While it's certainly not going to be able to compete with games like Pillars of Eternity or Divinity Original Sin on a graphical level, the developers have still managed to put together a very intriguing new take on the conventional CRPG formula. If you think that Black Geyser looks like the sort of game that you might enjoy, then I encourage you to go check it out. You can find out more about the project by visiting the official website, the official YouTube channel, or the original crowdfunding campaign over on Kickstarter. As always, links are in the description.